2007 Super Aeronautique 220 Team Edition. It's a boat we recent, recently acquired, uh, but have some history on it. This is actually um, our owner Mark's demo boat when it was new in uh, 07. Uh, it's a boat that we have seen come through the dealership a number of times, whether people brought it to us for service or traded it in or uh, and we sold it again and ended up with uh, taking it back in on a trade. Um, but a really cool boat, uh, great color scheme with classic red and black. So you got the black main stripe, it's got a silver cloud hull and deck. Um, with I believe I don't remember what they called red in 07 it might close to victory red if it's not victory red it's looks darn near um, does have the shield graphic with the wing coming off which is in good shape um, a black factory uh, black factory flight control tower which looks really cool kind of unique uh, sits on a tandem axle random uh, ramlin trailer random trailer no uh, with chrome fenders spare tire up top on the tower does have a pair of the factory rotating board racks wakeboard racks uh, factory speakers have been replaced with uh, two pairs of kicker tower speakers and it does have a uh, under tower mounted bimini top that goes along with it but has a really nice cover that goes along with it as well um, has the straps that go down around the trailer frame if you decide to use those as, as well. Cool custom touches, has painted side vents, which are still in pretty good shape. You see some light uh, surface cracks on a couple little spots on there. The chrome uh, grate in the back, the Correct Craft wakeboard logo, it's classic. A couple little nicks there. Uh, we went around and did a really nice detail on this thing to get this thing back coming back to life it was a little faded in the red primarily in the transom of the boat and as you can see now everything's showing really great um, red's just one of those colors that if you're not maintaining it properly it, it is prone to fading and that's kind of true for any of the darker colors but um, we brought that color right back out of this gel coat and it looks awesome. Got a chrome Nautique logo in the back as well as a transom stereo remote. This has been upgraded with a surf exhaust system on it too. Let's take a quick lap and point out any little scratches and things. There's going to be a few tiny ones you can see right there. Uh, just above it. This is all really small. Like I'm going to set the, my camera down real quick but you can see it's super tiny. Walking forward, we have another light scratch up here. Super Aeronautique Chromax looks amazing. The graphics are in really good shape. Generally, these just get beat. Um, that's a testament to who's owned the boat since it was new. Uh, you got a couple tiny scuffs here and here. But honestly, it's kind of like a all over the place type of graphic and little nicks and stuff don't really stand out like a lot of the single singular color graphics would have and you got like your paisley and all that in there so it breaks it up nicely and hides any little nicks but it's not too bad in the first place docking lights up front coming around the port side there are a couple uh, longer scuffs on this side um, but they're not too deep they don't stand out a ton Again, Chromax lettering, all looks really nice. And the gel coat just looks amazing. Got a small scuff right here. Actually, that was just wax. Look at that, came right off. Our vent on this side does have a couple surface cracks here and up top. Transom, again, looks great. This will have a 1235 prop on it. I took it off, um, so I think it had a ding in it, but it'll have a prop back on it. Before it goes out the door, we promise. Stepping up into the inside of the boat. This has been upgraded from the factory carpet to um, some brown sea deck flooring. And it looks great because it has that matching shield graphic um, cut into the sea deck flooring. So it looks really nice. Got silver cloud interior. has uh, red piping. 
with black accents and kind of a silver carbona. From what I gather, this is an original interior. Um, at least I'm not seeing anything that is apparent in terms of what that in terms of being replaced at some point in time. Sun pads in good shape. We've got the storage compartment. Whoa! Let me get a new strap on here. There we go. Um, storage compartment that you can access from the back of the boat. Just have kind of a dry rotted strap here, probably. Unscrew that, put a piece of material there. Um, on either side, just some storage. You can see we've got the factory, or not, not the factory, but the boat cover in there. Let's open up port side where there's no cover and you can see this has been upgraded with a uh, plug-and-play ballast system uh, battery switches in here as well but down below um, you have the stock hard tank systems so there's three tanks in this boat for that and then you have a bag plumbed in as a piggyback on top of that on either corner and that's gonna help this boat both surf and wakeboard to kind of its full potential those i don't know the exact size on that bag but that thing's big it holds a bunch of water so that's going to be really nice uh, if we open up the center sun pad you've got the big storage tray above the engine it's kind of hard to show the engine here without having a second hand to hold it but there's your pcm excalibur 330 it's got 587 hours on it so nothing too crazy for this particular model year. And paired with that 1235 prop, that's going to do a great job even with the extra weight in the boat. Uh, 220s have always had kind of a unique and interesting seating layout. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think it's cool. You've got these kind of sections in the middle on both sides where you get a lean back that faces backwards, which is great. This side, you've got a uh, spot for a trash can to drop into or just plain old storage, whatever you want to use it for. Um, our seat cushion in the back corner here is starting to split, as you can see. Uh, we also have a split down here at the where the seat back meets the seat base on this corner. Uh, the interior speakers are all the, uh, all six of them are the standard Polk audio speakers from this era. You can see a little bit of fading on this silver vinyl, the original Hurricane graphic on them. But this texture vinyl is just it's kind of getting dried out. You can see that throughout the interior in a couple spots, namely at the tops, uh, but not too bad. Uh, this corner seat's definitely in a lot better shape than the other side and just has a tiny split right there. Nothing to point out too much on this seat aside from a little tiny split right there in the corner. These do open up into uh, sub seat storage. It's carpeted. Same thing with the back, as you can see. Kind of the same thing on both sides. Seat deck floor is in good shape. I don't know exactly when this went in, but it still looks great. Has a lot of texture left on it. We open up under the seat here. You can see one of the two batteries. There's a little bit of mildew on this love seat that we weren't able to clean off. Uh, although we did try to do this in the winter time. A lot of times, if you get a little bit of the cleaner on there and set it out in the sun, it'll do a little bit better job than us cleaning them inside in the winter time. Uh, again, a little bit of sun fading on this textured vinyl. Opening up. Clarion Audio sub, or not subwoofer, but Clarion Audio amplifier, and then we have a big Rockford Fosgate sub box down in here. And there's our trash can that belongs over on the other side. So that's your love seat. Driver's seat is in good shape. Again, all original. This doesn't look bad at all. Um, same thing with this t this uh, textured Carbona vinyl. It's a little faded. Starting to get a little age look look to it. A couple little dots of, of mildew on this flip-up bolster on the driver's seat. But driver's seat looks pretty good. Oh, forgot to point this out. 
got the bread box. Everybody loves it. You put your sunscreen, whatever, hide it out in the bread box. Coming over to the dash, you got a uh, stereo head unit controller over here, as well as a, on the transom like we saw. You got these kind of hybrid gauges on the dash. This has the zero off GPS speed control, which is a really nice upgrade. Um, but you've got like your depth sounder, a lot of your vitals and everything will show up on these digital gauges on both the TAC and the, the Speedo. But over on the right side, you have more analog gauges for that stuff as well. As the keypad ignition being a team edition, um, this does have a heater and you fill and drain your ballast with these buttons on this side. Gauges down there for the hard tanks. You can get into your storage compartment through the side here, although with that big sub box in there, it's not the most useful thing in the world. And then pop it up into the bow. You've got kind of a wraparound seating layout. Um, again, silver vinyl, a little sun faded, a little hard, but the vinyl up here is in good shape. You are going to see a few spots of mildew that are very light in a couple different spots. But uh, overall, not too offensive being an 07 with, you know, almost 600 hours on it. The last thing I want to point out are, is rather, the ski locker. So you got some storage down in the floor. Heater outlet down below. There is a heater outlet up top on the dash and you've got the big tower mounted mirror on here but overall a really nice 220 it's well equipped looks amazing nice upgrades with the c deck and uh upgraded ballast system so if you want to come check out this 220 hit us up at n3 boatworks you can reach us at 317-845-9253 thank you for taking the time to watch